My name is Christian. I'm going to be building a timber frame structure that's going to serve as a proof of concept for a house I'm planning on building in a few years. We're going to start with this, to this, to this, to this. Let's get started. Let's start off with the simple case and talk about what central line layout actually looks like. I've started by creating a level line on either end, uh, both horizontally and vertically, roughly centered in the beam. Um, now what this means is when I snap lines across like this and like this, we have two perpendicular planes in our structure, right, in, 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 our, in our beam. Um, this is actually a really powerful tool. Um, and what we can do, just to demonstrate what this looks like, is scale it out this way. Yep, come on, SketchUp. Oh, almost had it. <laughs> Not a huge fan of the scaling tool, and we're also going to scale it out this way a little bit. This might look a little bit strange, um, but this is conceptually, I think, the simplest way to grasp what central line layout gives you. Um, so. Normally what we would do was is use the story pole like I have laid out here to mark lines across. I'm not going to bother doing that here just uh, for the sake of simplicity. Um, I definitely go into a lot more detail on how exactly I do that in the practical videos. What I'm trying to show here is um, when the beam bends all the way across, how do you adjust for that? Which is a little bit harder for me to show in person. So I can take these templates move them over to here on that center line and move these over to the center line and projecting that straight through and let me actually do that to here no that didn't go where I wanted Let's move these here. And I'm actually going to move these up a little bit just so it's easier to see in some of the coming techniques how this functions. So if we were to look from that piece, from that template through to this template, you could see we would have a straight mortise going all the way through. And it's always going to be directly perpendicular and centered on this plane here, going through the beam. And that's the same for these templates over here, which give us the location of the sword hilt joint. Um, what I haven't done is I haven't shown how the rafters sit on here. I'll be doing a quick example of that um, in some of the other pieces of layout. Oh, actually, no. no I'm, I'm going to do that now. Um, I know that I have one rafter in the center here, um, which is actually going to be off of that point to here. And I know on the structure, I come up two inches, which is right here, over two inches, and up to here. The way I actually do that in person is I've got a T-square coming off of this face going up this way. Um, and then I will pop out this piece here. Um, interestingly enough, there's some, a really interesting geometry problem um, that I've, I'm going to gloss over in this video, um, where if you have the beam bending in two different directions, um, getting the position of this line and the corresponding line here for forming this angle for the rafters is remarkably hard. Uh, what I've done instead, and you'll see this in the video, is I've actually used a level that is perpendicular, er, th that is parallel to this face with an angle gauge to get that roughly where it wants to be. Um, the roof is definitely not going to be perfectly straight, and we'll see how well my guesstimation ends up with the side-to-side -side motion. I have effectively taken care of the vertical motion and not the horizontal, but vertical is usually worse on the beams I have. I'm kind of getting a little bit off topic here, and um, 
just suffice to say that doing that actual layout is a little bit strange. Um, and especially for the way I'm anchoring the rafters, isn't going to matter quite so much. And I can always shim that in the worst case scenario. Anyways, back to the regularly scheduled program. So here you can see our layout um, just kind of lines up. It's pretty straightforward. Um, one quick example is if I scale down this side a little bit, it still fits pretty well. What we could do is we could also move the where we're snapping these lines on the beam to account for that, where this side might be a little bit over, this side might be a little bit under. Um, and you can decide, using your templates, how exactly you want to deal with that offset. Um, you can either do this while you're snapping your lines or snap additional lines as you go to be your uh, offset plane. Um, so I think that's most of what I wanted to go over for the normal layout, and the next segment will cover what happens when you twist your beam in interesting ways. Okay. So we want to twist this beam, because especially in the red pine I'm working with, it likes to twist, or check, or do all sorts of weird things. So we're going to come to this plane, and let's rotate this by 10 degrees, which is, uh, it's to be fair, it's a little bit extreme. Um, and on this side, our lines are no longer, our, our planes are very off on that side. On this side, it still looks really nice, but once we get to the other side, things have gotten so screwy that if you were to, oops, wrong button, if you were to follow this line on the template across, and we move, actually, it'd be even easier to just move the template across. Yeah, on that dimension. You can see, nope, I did that wrong. If we were to project this across, you would see that there's hardly any of the sword hilt here, and I rotated it on the wrong area, and this one's buried in the beam. So this wouldn't really look that great, and it wouldn't be lined out well, and you'd see that also on the center as well. Let's redo, go back to here. This is where I want to be. So what do we do in this scenario? Well, what I usually do here is I will counter-rotate the beam on this end by about five degrees. And in the real world, I'm not measuring this. What I'm doing is I'm going along the beam with a level and saying, okay, this side slants down, this side is level, let's offset it and just keep eyeballing it back and forth. This does not need to be a precise measurement, this just needs to get you close. And now what we've done is we've spread the error that we're seeing across the whole uh, uh, th across the whole layout. And in this case, we don't need to do too much more. We can continue on with our uh, our pre previously scheduled program with marking based off of these center lines. And the big thing I want to get to in this video is that the center lines are actually not based on the beam. They're based on these planes. And you're placing the beam within this these two parallel faces here. And that's what your joinery is aligned to. Because fundamentally in the structure, when we get rid of this piece, the relation of these pieces to each other and not to the piece we're putting the holes in or cutting pieces out of, um, that's what matters. Um, and we want our joinery based on that and not off of anything else, if we can help it. So that's most of what I wanted to show here. Um, and again, if I was lining up this template on this face and just boring straight through, um, if, if it was sitting on the workbench like this, um, if I bored through here, it might look good on this side and look good on the other side, but when I, went to, when I go to align it to these vertical posts, <laughs> they would be sticking out like that and like that. So by, again, by aligning all of our joinery to these two planes, um, we've effectively canceled out any sort of aberrations we see in the 
in the beams we're working with. Um, and this example was pretty easy to deal with. In the coming examples, we'll have to move the and it move and translate the beam more significant more significantly than just the simple twist. Okay, so for this next segment, I've put a line going straight through, or a plane going straight through the center of this beam. What this allows me to do in SketchUp is I can bend it all sorts of weird ways. Um, we're not going to do, I'm not going to go too crazy with this, but I'm going to do some realistic examples that remind me of things that I've had to deal with in the past week or so doing the top plates in real life. In some cases, um, the center was Oh, the center bowed up by, let's call it an inch and a half, which is pretty significant, but uh, not that far off from some of what I've seen um, actually building the structure. And immediately you can see the mortises are actually fine. It's where the mortises sit that is the problem. If we were going to uh, align these templates to the beam itself, like th this align the bottom of this to the bottom of the beam and then actually try to put the structure together it would look something like this Here. let's do this so it looks something like that where actually I did that backwards sorry look something like this where the center of the beam would be above where it should sit on the middle post so, what do we do here? Instead of thinking about moving the templates or moving where the mortises are going to go, we actually move the beam relative to those planes. And so what I do is I don't actually measure this. I eyeball it. Um, I try and make it so that um, most of the joints fit reasonably well within the templates. Um, and you, again, you'll, you'll see this um, across the, the top plate video I did where um, some of the sword hilts for the I guess sword joints, I'm not sure if it's a sword joint or a sword hilt joint, I just call them sword joints because um, it looks like there's a hilt on there. Um, anyways, these swords are more recessed into the beams and these are um, less recessed into the beams. Um, and if you resnapped your center lines based on that offset, everything lines up pretty well. Um, in this case, this on the top here becomes a little bit deeper. And if I were to copy this, do this without taking up too much time. And we're to move this over to here you can see that this won't be as deep, but it will still let these rafters sit perfectly in their slots. And this is where some of what I alluded to before is a little bit interesting, because if I were to just put a line here and go to the same point where it should be, that's not actually gonna work, um, because that will be a different angle than this right here. That's the angle I want for the rafters. Um, but if I measure from the center line on both of these and the beam is changed like this, it actually won't come out right. Um, if you're doing an offset with an angle like this, you can only measure on one face. And you want to choose the face that's across your, your beams the, the most reliable, which in my case was the vertical one. So again, I used a... Um, level going across with an angle gauge to get that particular angle there, um, which was fun. That took me <laughs> longer than I'd care to admit to figure out what the right way to do that was, or what, what the best approximation for my, excuse me, use case was. Um, all right. So that works out pretty well. Um, again, I have, other than doing some rough figuring here, I didn't actually measure anything. Um, I used my templates um, to figure out where everything goes in relation to the center line. I may have had to snap some additional center lines, and on this end, it might look a little bit funny having this quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes while I'm talking, quote unquote center line way off on the ends. But 
really you want your uh, uh, the, the center is not center to the ends it's centered to the average of the beam if that makes any sense whatsoever um, hopefully this is showing is, is and I'm kind of restating what I said last time is but these planes that we're using or that we're creating using this center line layout is what all of your templates are referenced off as off of and not what the beam actually looks like. The beam is just positioned within those planes using that center line technique. And in reality you're just snapping some lines, holding up your templates, drawing some lines, and you're good to go. Um, very little actual numeric math involved. Because I get my mixes numbered up more often than I like to admit. Alright, so that's a vertical bend. Um, you can do, you could make this an S shape and everything that I've talked about uh, still holds true. You're keeping all of your templates aligned to this, these centers and positioning your beam within that. Okay, so the next type of translation we want to do is bending the beam. And this one's kind of fun. So let's go out um, hmm. Let's do something a little bit more contrived with this example. Let's go out two inches this way. And we'll come... Let's do, well, let me do this. Center there. So now I can bend it in two different spots. Move this one inch that way, and this one inch this way. And this is a fairly extreme example, um, but if you were to look at some of my beams, they're not too far off of this. Um, and when you're sighting, whoa, that is not what I wanted to do. When you're sighting down this, your beam might, uh, just going off this edge, it might look like this, but Again, doing this sort of center line layout um, might be a little bit trickier to get the average on this beam, but should still work the same way we've been talking about uh, before. So let me move these templates this way a little bit, so you can see them a little bit better, and move them this way, let's call it s 7 inches. I'll go a little bit further. Let's move this 8 inches, there we go. So again, these are still reference to these planes and off of the marks made by the story pole. Um, I'm just doing a little bit of cheating in CAD to make it a little bit easier. Um, so those still line up pretty well. Um, that's not too much of a problem. But if you take a look, our mortises are still perfectly in alignment. Um, you have to be a little bit careful here where, um, especially the way I've bent this beam, um, this, there's not a lot of extra meat here, and coming down here, there's not a lot of extra meat here. Um, so, sometimes you'll actually want to, depending on where exactly the bend is, um, so if I were to move this bend up, and again, this is a little bit of a contrived example. Um, well, how do I want to do that? Yeah, if we move that there and we move this here, we may actually end up rotating this beam slightly in order to get better results. And now we're not centered here as much, but along the beam, these are all close to the center. So, again, the, the big thing I'm trying to convey with this is all of your templates are aligned off of these planes that you're forming just by doing level lines and then snapping along. And you're positioning your beam within that space. Um, and that means you're not measuring or say one one side is smaller than the other and it's all twisted and cattywampus. Um, 
you are just as long as your templates and your joints fit within the 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 beam you have and your center lines follow the rules laid out of just forming these two planes everything thing just kind of works um no adding subtracting multiplying dividing scaling everything by a factor um this just kind of works um i guess something that's worth showing so if i move this out of the way let's go four feet over here and i move this into position let's see is actually not as lined up as I'd like, but I can move you to that point. And that is, goes to the center of that. Um, oops, there we go. You can see how I'm using, these templates on these planes to figure all this out. And I actually moved this too far. Sorry, just trying to get a nice view of this. So your templates and your center lines form this sort of marking. And you're applying that to your beam. So I hope a lot of this translated, um, a lot of the concepts translated well enough that you can follow along at home um, and have gotten you to think a little bit more about how you do layout um, on the structures you work on and even on day-to-day -day furniture joinery and, and things of that nature. Um, this hopefully simple concept has saved me so many headaches um, and fixed a lot of the mistakes I've made with beams that aren't really as straight or as uniform as they should be coming off either the sawmill or especially uh, the ones that I um, very roughly by eye uh, did uh, some hand hewing on. But hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully some of that sunk in and please leave, leave some comments. Um, I'm always happy to revisit this um, in a different perspective or different light if this did, did exactly qu uh, click with people, but um, hopefully, um, most people watching can follow the convoluted way I was trying to explain this. Um, yeah, uh, the next video will be getting back into actual timber frame joinery showing off some of these techniques um, in a little bit more of a uh, direct sense.